This ACC college football preview edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by WinBet. WinBet is now live in Colorado, Indiana, Michigan, New Jersey, Tennessee, and Virginia. From boosted parlays to in game odds on every major sport, WinBet has what you need to win. Sign up today to receive a $500 risk free sports bet. Download the WinBet app now or visit WYNNBet.com and start winning today. We're also brought to you by PropSwap. America's number one app to buy and sell sports bets. Use promo code SGP on your first deposit and receive up to $500 in bonus cash. That's propswap.com, promo code SGP. We're also right to be at Underdog Fantasy. Sign up at underdogfantasy.com with promo code SGPN and receive a free $25 entry to use in Best Ball Mania 2 for a chance to win $1 million. And of course, don't forget to download the SGPN app in the App Store or the Google Play Store. Woo! Welcome everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green with my partner in picks, right? Real money Kramer. What's happening? Kramer dog. Oh man. ACC football, baby. Let's go. Joining us as always in studio. When we talk college football, Colby, Dan, AKA the Danter base popping the collar on his uh, Colby stand up. So the, the camera can catch oh, here. Oh, I got to get the private school pussy effect going. He's got a, a Duke polo shirt on with the collar popped. What this <laughs> says here is that it's, <laughs> it's, it's 1993, some Zubaz uh, like design I'll, I'll on, the close on it. There you go. <laughs> yeah. It's, it looks great. So we're going to need to color correct the cameras for that uh, crazy Duke. <laughs> Design there. Well, uh, well, it's funny. My father actually must have went back into a time machine because he gave me this for Christmas this year, which really means he went to a thrift store and <laughs> sent me this. And I, first off, I'm not a Duke fan. I just think maybe he was just like, "Hey, you do a college football show and college basketball show, so here, have a Duke shirt from 1992." <laughs> you know like, what I mean? <laughs> it's like it's it's kind of on the same part level as like wearing the NFL logo. Yeah, a la Rob Lowe. We saw Wade Phillips on the NFL Network rocking an NFL <laughs> polo. That was pretty cool of him. Fellow uh, fellow Just Blue Wire podcast host. College football. <laughs> I mean, of all teams, though, Duke. <laughs> <laughs> you could have done better. Nothing says college uh, football like it. Duke football. Oh man, we got uh we got the Big Ten out, the Big Twelve out. About to break down the ACC. Let's go, baby. We're talking college football. We're talking college football. We're of course talking online sports gambling. That's right, legal, licensed online sports gambling, available in a number of states. More states coming right around the corner. Well, we're talking win bet. That's right, Colorado. Yes, Indiana. Yes, Michigan. Yes, New Jersey. Yes, Tennessee. Yes, Virginia. Yes. You want to get down on UVA win totals? You live in the state of Virginia. Win bet can make that happen. Virginia Tech win total. Win bet can make that happen. Win bet is a certified. That's right. They're a real. Head over to winbet.com. W Y N N B E T.com to start winning today. Get that $500 risk free sports bet. Download bet win three part formula. Easy for anyone to execute. Let's go, baby. Win bet. May uh, the the college oh football goodness. music may have drowned out our new friend of the program. Dog. <laughs> I could just set it up with every. Can you turn that up? Is no, that, that right. that's I, as I loud get, as you sent it. I will send you a louder version for okay. the next episode. <laughs> we, I mean, it's a great draw. I mean, it's just dog. Straight dogs. We got dogs. We got oh. dogs. All right. I I think it's fun to, when we do these to go from bottom to the top. Wow. S- speaking. Let's 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 kick it over. Well, hold up. What do you what I mean, you evaluate everything bottom to top, right? Exactly. exactly. <laughs> All right. Especially a sandwich. Let's go. Duke. Duke Blue Devils. They are sitting at a whopping. We're starting with the coastal, work our way to Atlantic. Basically Duke to Clemson in uh in reverse order here. Duke win total sitting at three and a half, minus 130 on the over. So people rushing into the counter. To get on the Duke over plus one ten on the under seventy five to one to win the division two hundred to one to win the conference. I know Phil Steele has them as the number one ACC uh, special teams unit, 
So that's a nice bright spot for the Blue Devils. But Colby, <laughs> are, are awesome. we? Can the can the Blue Devils, your Blue Devils, pull out four wins this season? Yes, I mean, first off, the coastal didn't happen last year. The ACC had Notre Dame. They just did this this crazy thing. Yeah. Well. Where they catered to a school because they were pussies, but um, uh, the the coastal as a conference has had seven different champions in the past seven years. So I know you mentioned that seventy five to one. Why not? It's chaos. This is chaos. So uh, look, quarterback's (laughs) name is Gunner. Gunner Holmberg. What a a great name. name? Well, and and usually in these divisions where it's kind of clumped together, the win totals and whatever. It seems to make sense to kind of ride some of these lower overs and then fade fade some of the top heavy ones. Especially David Cutcliffe, who, who's a great coach. He gets the maximum out of his teams year in, year out. I mean, hell, he got he helped Eli Manning win two Super yeah. Bowls. I mean, <laughs> that's all you need to say. If the Cutcliffe uh, can make Eli Manning a Super exactly. Bowl winner, a noted flaw in the resume is obviously Danny, Danny Dimes, but other than that, Cutcliffe, you're right. Strong, uh, strong history. Well, well and he, and he does great against the Group of Five. So Charlotte uh, and North Carolina A and T on their schedule. Now both those teams should be decent this year, but but Duke's track record, he he doesn't lose those games. So that's two wins right there. Yeah, I mean they could start out two and zero pretty easy. They take yeah. on the uh, the one one win total Kansas Jayhawks. It, well, and and <laughs> at home, I at think, home, I think you got to bring up the fact I'm high on Pat Fitzgerald always, but Cutcliffe plays Northwestern really yeah, well. They've won a, two in a row against Northwestern. That's a big I, I nerd mean, school game. I mean Duke at Charlotte, Duke at home, NCAA and T. Duke at home against Northwestern, and Duke at home against Kansas. Now, as a guy who's locked up. Kansas over one on multiple podcasts on this network. That's wrong. I'm hoping for an upset there. Yeah. But really, Duke could go four and oh. Easily. You may yeah. not even have to sweat yeah. this. And and, and they have back to back home games to end it as well. Well, and then you add in like Georgia Tech, a team, yes, Georgia Tech, I think throttled them last year, but Georgia Tech's kind of a they're a weird team. We don't know where to where to put them. Wake Forest kind of a rivalry game after a bye week. Yes, do I think Wake is better, but it wouldn't shock me if Duke won that game. Uh, Duke plays Virginia Tech surprisingly well. You look at last year, Virginia Tech won, but it was a close game. The year before at Lane, uh, Duke won forty-five to ten. So I, uh, I, that was a bit of an outlier. I, I mean, would you be shocked if this Duke team went five and seven? I wouldn't be. And, and again, to Phil Steele's point about the ACC, uh, the special teams unit, you joke, but that is something that can help you pull out a win here or there that maybe you sh- you had no business winning. And uh, Chase Bryce is gone. Uh, well, he was trash. Yeah, so uh, if Holmberg just doesn't turn the ball over, this Gunner? team, yeah. If well, Gunner, they, and they, uh, w- what's the new OC's name, Colby? Uh, what? Because they got rid of who did they bring in? Who did they? Well, bring while you're in? doing it's that, it's gonna be Cutcliffe calling the, the plays other though. Point, the uh, well, he's relinqu- he he's given that up, Colby. He's yeah. not, I mean, you know how this goes. Uh, but look, sometimes Gun- you, you <coughs> shake it up just to throw a name in there. It's uh, he, Ro- what Roquan Boyette. He, Is that um, what I'm seeing here in Jeff Ferris? This was also, I mean, uh, you guys haven't, but it's a huge, you know, we want, Sean's been talking about teams to kind of uh, look that to have a better year now that they have a full off season and yeah. all that jazz. But I kind of like the, the coaches in year two, <clears throat> that year one was 2020. And the market hasn't adjusted. I think there is some value but, there. But but Duke, like you you look at a program that just shut the fuck down. Yeah. So there's that element too. Like there's Duke is probably Duke probably has more uh, potential uh, just because of how low they were last year to come forward and at three and a half t- to your point on the schedule like they could very easily be three and one in the non-conference and they're not going to go winless in the conference so there you there's too many teams in the coastal that have complete dumpster fire potential yeah. I mean, look, we my hokey is yeah. included in that in that conversation. So, uh, give me the over on Duke. I mean, again, I think you could be. We could cash this after week four, but t- I mean, yeah, it's th- it, it wouldn't, wouldn't be, be that crazy. The craziest. Yeah. Georgia Tech comes in next at a five on the uh, win total there, minus one fifteen on the over, minus one hundred five on the under, thirty five to one to win the division. I mean, when Duke seventy five to one is is it really a Forty to one difference between them and Georgia Tech. I don't know. Uh, Thirty-five to one to win the division. Hundred to one to win the conference. Of course, uh, Georgia Tech finally, seemingly out of the uh, triple option. A couple years in, have some positive regression factors going there. They have some continuity at the quarterback. A, a quarterback who 
knows he's not not some guy they convert from the triple option. Colby, where you at Georgia Tech? Five. Uh, um, this one is actually one of the harder ones for me. Yeah, I mean, I lean under, but I do have them starting out two and zero. So then you think, okay, could they find three wins in the coastal? Uh, yeah, they could because they play Pitt, and Pitt always plays down to them. They play Duke. They beat Duke last year. UVA is a team that can lay, you know, they're offensively challenged at times. Miami, the last time Georgia Tech played at Hard Rock Stadium, they won. And then BC, you can definitely make a case that they could win these games. This is, I think the number is right. I don't like this play. Calling call for a push. I'm on the under. I'm uh, on the here's I, the I, I, I would uh, like to uh, use my pass on mm, this one, right? This is, uh, <laughs> I, I would love if they offered the push price because then we could actually, it's yeah, actionable. I see them being We got to ask yeah. WinBet if they All can. Right. Have some exact uh, win total bets for I, some real DGens only. I failed. <laughs> I failed to mention this with Duke, but they do. Phil Steele has them right at sixty nine for strength of schedule, so maybe another nice. reason to take over. That's the that's oh. the case for under with Georgia Tech. Uh, third hardest schedule. You look at the schedule; it's a gauntlet. It's almost. I mean, it's it's probably the only thing worth mentioning when you look at this schedule because when you. They only have six true home games, right? They're playing North Carolina, neutral site uh, at the in the big house in the big dome, and so of those six, wait, you mean five? What six? Well, if they had six home games, that would be normal. No, I mean major conference teams. They're only playing six home games right now. That that's what I'm saying. I'm I'm pointing out that most major conference teams are playing more home games than away games. Okay. Uh, so it's 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 not a good spot to be in, and then you and then you because be North Carolina, you lose the home game against North Carolina. It's being played in the dome. There's going to be a lot of North Carolina fans coming down there, spending their money in Atlanta, maybe doing some things down on the low, as they call it. Look, this this team is a dumpster fire. If you're te- if if you're telling me to if there's one team I would pick that could go winless in the conference, I wow. think it's Georgia Tech. See, but I also oh think like. God. He- I think they're going to be one. Year. I, I think we're going to be talking. Here's here's my prediction. Next year, we're going to be talking about this team. Wow, they had a lot of close losses. They were fighting hard till the end, but they just weren't getting the W's because this is still only the third year uh, out of being a triple option well, team. And he and basically that matters. punted on last season by starting Jeff Sims, who was a 17 year old freshman. So I, I think, you know, Sims showed promise if he can work on a few things. I, I could make a case that they could go six and six. I just think that gun to my head, give me, I think they're going to be five and seven. Give me, give me the under, uh, give me a four and eight. Where are I, the six wins? I, I don't think the schedule's as tough. I disagree with, with, with Phil Steele there. Cause I think in the coastal, anyone's got opportunity. They start with right? Northern Illinois and Kennesaw state. That's After two that, and oh, I at, think I at think Clemson, North Carolina, uh, they neutral could beat side, North Carolina, Pittsburgh at home at Duke. By week at Virginia, Virginia Clemson's Tech, the only for sure. At loss Miami, there. Boston College, they won at the last Notre time Dame, at Miami, Georgia. Uh, this is this is uh, that, a, look that to me that at Clemson, you're at crazy. Notre Dame, <laughs> at Clemson, at Notre Dame, so and home to Georgia. Music. Play the lock music. Are, are the only three for sure losses? I, I'm pound. I, I am. You're running to the booth, Ryan, or the win. I, a Colby, I bet net. your dick on this under. <laughs> The, you're telling means. me that I mean North Carolina is a team that lost to Florida State last Cole, year. What makes you under. think I am on the Why, under? But I'm just saying you guys are all on the same side. You here. said make a case. No, I'm, I'm giving right. you a case. Too much time on the wrong tech. No, everyone, everyone tuned in for Georgia Tech talk. <laughs> Virginia UVA sitting at six and a half on the win total, a plus one hundred five on the over, minus one twenty five on the under, eleven to one in the division. Coming off a they won it last year. Essentially, uh, fifty-five to one to win the conference. Now we have a UVA alum as a co-host of the. Uh, well, I assume he graduated. I didn't get his transcripts, but uh, no, he's Patty just a C. fan. He's <laughs> just a fan. He's a JM JMU alum, but it oh, grew, grew right. up a diehard Virginia okay. fan, which yeah. is weird. Yeah. It's weird to grow up a diehard. Virginia well, they were fan. nasty in those back in those the days. The barbers, yeah. Patty C. Yeah. Dog. UVA. <laughs> Colby, where are we at? I know you're. Uh, I know I'm a huge Brennan Armstrong fan. Mm. I've been calling. I've been calling him a poor man, Steve Young. <laughs> Actually, I, I stole that from your uh, brother Nick. But a decent point. Uh, Brennan Armstrong came mm. in, threw for 2,100 yards, 18 TDs, 11 interceptions, ran for 552 and five rushing touchdowns. BYU is on the schedule. That's a pretty interesting game for them. I mean, they basically play 11 Power Fives. Yeah, and the. 
Not think Illinois. That, think that jumps out at, to me. <laughs> They're is in the Big Ten. They only have 14 rest- returning starters, which is usually not a horrible number. But in the ACC, it's actually second fewest this year. Kramer, I know you're biased. I know you're anti UVA. Build the case for the under here. I mean, well, the case for the over is that, and Colby's going to talk about Bronco Mendenhall and this culture and all this bullshit. The case against <laughs> it, the case against is the schedule, and they they go to North Carolina, which they, they but can very, they have owned North Carolina lately. Look, uh, see last year too, that they, they have fucked up North Carolina. It, this is a Mac th- Brown got fired at 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 Texas. For the way BYU ran for and Taysom Hill ran for 500 yards against them. To me, this this whole th- this uh, this total comes down to the if you think they can win at BYU, if you think they can win at BYU, you take the over. If you don't think they can win at BYU, take the under. Uh, I think I think because I kind of I I believe in Bronco Mendenhall, a real coach, uh, a real a, a real a university hired a real coach building a real culture there up up there in Charlottesville. <laughs> Uh, wow, sub uh, sub tweet here over at Virginia Tech. <laughs> yeah, do I take the over on UVA to really send a message? Oh this wow, year? yeah, that, that yeah. would be All the right. ultimate. Give me the over. I I kind of like it too. I know I know their schedule's tough, but again, I mean they they won the coastal last year. Is BYU good? I uh, think they lost the most production. I think the schedule's like, only tough because it aesthetically you see at BYU, at Pittsburgh, v- at North Carolina, at Miami. I think catching Miami where they catch Miami is a good spot. Uh, I don't think Derek King's going to be full go early in the season. He v- tore that late. Virginia since hiring Bronco Mendenhall undefeated against North Carolina. All and right? how many times? And, and, and yeah, and they're just it's hard to it's hard to see them uh, I guess they could get a bowl game and still go under here, but no. Colby I, sounds like you're on the over. I as am, well. I, yeah. dude. Bronco Mendenhall, I think, is one of the best coaches in America, and I, I think, uh, you know, he gets the maximum out of his team. This defense will be chippy. The offense, Armstrong, will limit the turnovers, and I think there will be a clean game. I actually think. I mean, yes, you would favor North Carolina, you would favor Notre Dame, but I still think those games are winnable, and you can so you can go through the schedule and say. Hey, Virginia could win every single game. I mean, I, I don't. I'm not making a case for them to go 12 and 0, but I just think that they'll be like seven and five, eight and fours. You know, and potentially best case scenario nine and three, maybe ten and two. But uh, there's too many winnable games on the schedule, so I'm on the over. Yeah, and I want I wanted to verify this, but the Notre Dame catches UVA after Navy. What do we always say about the game after you play a triple option oh, yeah, team? That's always yeah. tough. You're going to be banged yeah. up a little bit, so uh, diving I, at your knees. I don't know. I, I hate to be pro UVA this year, but <laughs> I mean, you can make a case if they beat. Maybe Ke- if you fired Justin Fuente, I'd be taking the under. They could start like seven or eight <laughs> and one. You know what I mean? That you can make a case for that. Now, sure, it's it's the coastal, so they'll probably go four and four, but uh, you can make a, a a case for that for sure. Moving over to the Pittsburgh Panthers, sitting at seven. Over minus one twenty, under plus a hundred, ten to one to win the division, forty five to one to win the conference, hundred fifty uh, and to one to win it all. Uh, that's not gonna happen. But you know, you got Narduzzi twenty nine twenty one in ACC play, uh, according to Phil Steele, number four in ACC defense, and uh, you know Narduzzi, according to our, again Phil Steele, keeps claiming that uh, Pickett is an NFL quality quarterback. They have a uh, pretty solid defense. Where are you at with the Panthers, Colby? Uh, I love the over here, man. Uh, I think their schedule lo- aligns beautifully. Uh, they don't have back-to-back away games. They start out. I I don't see how they won't start out. I mean, knowing Pitt, knowing Pitt, they'll find a way to lose one of these games. But they should start out five and zero. UMass, Tennessee, Western Michigan, New Hampshire, and Georgia Tech. Those should you should be yep. five and zero there. Uh, and then let's not forget like the, these tough games, they get them at home, like North Carolina coming up to that. It's coming up to Pittsburgh on that tall grass on November 11th, even Miami on October 30th or even Clemson. I mean, Pitt Clemson fans already know about Pitt. You know what I mean? Like they, they're going to win one of those games that, that uh, those three teams are sc- probably going to be favored. So I, I think the over Mark Whipple Six year quarterback Kenny Pickett. Uh, I just think that uh, the offense will be a lot better. Yeah, they have a nice combo yeah. uh, schedule wise as far well, as like getting some of the tough teams at home. I was going to say they do catch UNC, Clemson, and Miami, which isn't the best, but but they catch them at home. It's oh, it, it is the official weird road trip. I will say we do f- seem to forget every preseason how frustrating it is to bet on Narduzzi 
on 100%. a game to game basis, especially yeah. as a favorite. But uh, outside of catching, you know, they're going to win at least one of those games. They're going to sneak up on someone, probably oh, I Miami. Guarantee you. Uh, like yeah. you said, the non-conference should be a four and zero. And the last uh, look, how many how many major conference teams like this are rolling out a super senior at quarterback? Yeah, that's going to have to matter. Like if you think about the cognitive advantage of having a guy going from twenty two to twenty three or something like that, it seems like it would be a, a nice advantage. Uh, last thing I'll say, they also catch Virginia Tech off of the Notre Dame yeah. game when and they're they have a buy. when they're coming yeah. off the buy. Yeah. So. I, I, the schedule's uh, like triple a, salute on the over, huh? Yeah, it's a great schedule for them. And we're gonna hate it when we're watching Narduzzi blow a lead <laughs> against can, Western Michigan. He kills me as <laughs> he's that, really. That, that's dumb. the only thing that makes you nervous. You're just well, like, oh god, why? He, remember he was up. They were de- no, they were down four to I'm, Penn I'm State. Writing it down, hold on. They're down four to Penn State with two minutes left at the Penn State one yard line, and he kicks a field goal in fourth and one. Never can, can someone I mean, like that was <laughs> never lay points with Narduzzi has just been added to the college football <laughs> betting notes for the season. Never lay points with Narduzzi. I mean, he makes you scratch your head. Never sometimes. lay points. Like maybe a point, maybe two. Oh man, talking about cuts clothing. You know, Ryan, we had the milestone. We got that app launch. It's a pretty big milestone for us and for the company and. Whether you're hustling for a promotion, working on your golf swing, or just chilling with friends, Cuts Clothing keeps you feeling good and looking sharp. And you know what they say look sharp, bet sharp. And oh, yeah. uh, I certainly do that when I'm rocking one of these nice Cuts uh, t shirts. Was wearing them the past couple of days. I don't, I, I don't have any of my uh, clean laundry hammer because I actually, I actually worked out in one of the, I went oh. for a run in it, super comfortable. And I wore a different shirt out to dinner. Just, Showing off the versatility. Wow. No friction, huh? I, I mean, if, if Cuts was a t shirt, it'd be Chuck Bednarik. It can go both ways. Last <laughs> of the 60 minute men. Again, they're calling it uh, Cuts the Tesla of t shirts, hoodies, polos, sweatshirts, and more. They got it all. Again, buttery soft. If you're like me, the, the last thing you want is uncomfortable clothing. And let's be honest, I don't know about you. Hate, hate shopping, hate going to the mm. mall. I had to return some clothes the other day. It was a goddamn nightmare. <sighs> the parking at the mall these days. So, oh, what are you doing? You're a grown man in the mall? Nah, you gotta go online. Go to cutsclothing.com <laughs> slash SGP. Cutsclothing.com slash SGP. The convenience of ordering it online and 15% off. In honor of a cut's fifth year anniversary, cutsclothing.com slash SGP, 15% off. Doesn't get any better than that. We've agreed on every team so far. I know. This is Danger. a disaster. Danger. <laughs> well, this this is the most chaotic division in all of all of major conference football. Vatek, Ryan, your hokies. Seven and a half is the number, plus one twenty-five on the over. God damn it. Minus one fifty on the under. They're just asking you to take that over. Eight to one to win the Division, Ryan. Do you believe thirty to one to win the conference? Do it. Do we get some Enter Sandman going? Does Virginia Tech get that? Get that culture right? Of course, uh, hit pretty hard with COVID. Twenty-seven year uh, bull streak, a snap. So that's that's uh, their own milestone. Congrats on that. What's Frank, <laughs> what is your Frank take Beaver on rolling over? <laughs> what's your take on Fuentes and the Hokies, Ryan? Oh God, I mean. Here's the problem. It's if it went to so the Hokies could be good. They were a team that got destroyed by COVID. I'm a little concerned with some of the the transfer portal exits, but they could, you know, Fuentes offense. Uh, if the defense steps up and the offense is right, uh, I don't necessarily believe it. But there's no reason they couldn't be a team this year uh, with this weird juice. It's making me want to take a stab at the over just because there is chaos. But here's the problem. If things don't so they open with North Carolina, like it, I'll I'll give Fuente one thing. He clearly like once he's out on the field, he clearly can motivate his team. Uh it, it's it's some of the other aspects of coaching I don't know if I can trust. So I actually kind of like them opening uh, against, you know, Heisman favorite a team that's going to be probably what? Are they preseason top 10? Yeah. So uh, I that's the kind of spot that they've they they arrive at home. Uh, it's gonna everyone's coming back to school first weekend Labor Day weekend. Then they have Middle Tennessee. Then they have at West Virginia, a team that we discussed. Uh, you know, we don't know what we're gonna what we're gonna get there. And then Richmond. Watch if out they, for the spiders. Well, they have to because 
if they're three and one there, they then have Notre Dame. That's probably a loss. And get then a bye boom. week before Notre Dame. But and then, I think Notre Dame has Cincinnati that week, right? Or then, Wisconsin. Or no, Cincinnati. Yeah. They played. They played them tight. I mean, I'm going to be optimistic. I see some wins down the stretch. At Miami does not scare me. I don't like that Ooh. they have the back to back. Then uh, at road Virginia spots twice. Um, that's, but that's not a good way to end it. it. It's it's there's some winnable road games and 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 some home games that shouldn't be that difficult, right? A Syracuse. Uh, so look, I see five losses on the schedule. Give me the under. <laughs> I, I, I mean, uh, here's the thing: Virginia Tech sucks. Like even fucking... when even when Ryan is really high on them, when he's just barely high on them and and having to force himself into muscling, you're you're squeezing in to a plus one twenty five over on your Hokies. That's that's a red no, flag. To right. me as a Let's gut take the cover. under. Let's take the under. Oh, now oh. you now you've. You've gone no, too far. Right. I'm on the over. I've taken. You've gone uh, too far. It's it's you can. It's a great schedule. It's getting North Carolina week uh, week one where they're replacing a ton. So I I wouldn't want to play them in maybe. October. Yeah. What do you want to do? Give me the over. Let's go. <laughs> Plus one twenty five. Didn't last long. They Let's only <laughs> have one away game really until November. I yeah. mean, oh. they get at Georgia Tech on October thirty. That is, a, it's a weird schedule because they have two sets of back-to-back away games, all in pretty much the month of November. Yeah, four out of the last five um, games are on the road. But I still think, gun to my head, this is a team that I think they're they're better than what seven and a half wins is, and I think this schedule gives you that opportunity. What what game are you really like? Okay, North Carolina, Notre Dame, and I love both spots that you catch them at. So I'm not going to say you go zero and two there. I think you go one and one, maybe even two and zero, oh, and then the rest all winnable to me. Now, yeah. obviously, the back to back away Miami but, but Virginia, to, spot. but to me, that's not that. That they hasn't catch, been the problem with the Fuentes team in this era is is not having you know is not having winnable games on the schedule. It's it's executing it's winning games, closing games out. But if you look at their record against the spread, that to me highlights. And again, some of this may be a little bit wonky because of COVID, but four and a, four and seven against the spread last year. That that to me is not a team I'm looking to pound. Guarantee they're, they're gonna, you though that COVID thing was huge. Guar- no, like they, they, they didn't they help. They, Sean, they didn't even Sean. have coaches. They, they had like yeah. six or seven well, coaches out with COVID. They were playing like. Li- do you remember when they played the legit legit walk on and he got the interception and it was like a fucking yeah. Rudy moment? Yeah, uh, they're not going to be playing walk ons like that. Let's go. I'm I'm excited to see Justin Hamilton. I think he, I think Bud Foster when we had him on, he yeah. said he thinks he's a great DC. Last year was really hard on him because he couldn't even coach a lot of the games. He had COVID. Then a lot of uh, his well, secondary, his whole it was just a mess. Word on the street is Bud's been hanging around the program, mm. so he's been he's been Maybe hanging. He's gonna out. get things right. Got to get him on uh, the show. I don't. What, what's he got to do other than have you know enjoy a cocktail or two and watch <laughs> football? What it, what's in the uh, in the Bud Foster? It's some vodka, crayon. Definitely. I, yeah, I don't remember. But I think it was like a triple Tito's triple vodka. Right? Tito's yeah. vodka and cram. Tito's baby. All right. Enough about Kramer's uh, team. Dear King, Miami. Win total sitting at nine and a half. Pretty high. Uh, supposedly uh King is a hundred percent ready to go. No. And 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 sorry, oh real quick on the juice. Plus one twenty five on the over, minus one fifty on the under, plus one thirty five to win the division, nine to one to win the conference. I mean, I love it. I, I would take it at even nine. juice at nine. Yeah, yeah. I, I would try and find a nine, but I'm I'm still gonna take under nine and a half. Um you know, they lost a bunch of guys on the on the defense, Jalen Phillips, Quincy Roche. Uh, now in the NFL, D line's going to be pretty inexperienced, and I mean, just look at their schedule. It, it, I mean, how do you get to? How do you only have three losses here when they play? When they play Alabama, like I, I, I I'm just, uh, I'm struggling to see it. How Colby? bad do they get it from Alabama? Oh, they're gonna they're gonna get destroyed. Do you um, believe he's healthy? I mean, they're they're at home. I guess even if he is, he's not going to have a uh, like. Come on. Look, they were, and they they're a team that went to the air raid and it somewhat worked out last season, but I I don't think they need to with the talent they have. Um th- this is a situation where I love the under. I, I like the schedule is really hard. Uh, have you ever seen the, the 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 record of teams after Alabama? It, they normally all these teams you think they lose, lose to App State. Oh, that's a dangerous game. I mean, App State's a really good mid-major. I mean, look then, look at some of these road games though. At UNC, at Pittsburgh, at, like we just said at the end of October, the Florida team going up to pit, uh, the Sean. Pennsylvania late in the season. We see this all the time. Here's the here's what it, we it's do. It's just really easy to get them to, to three losses. We can bet 
that they won't make the playoff minus three thousand. No, oh, wow. uh, let's uh-huh. pull to get. Can, can we pull together done like three hundred k? That's another oh. thing. Is Manny Diaz? How about the crypto kitty? Ma- Manny Diaz. I, I he hasn't proven to me that he's a well, good coach yet. I mean, you look at last year; they're one of the luckiest teams in the nation. They, they play UAB on a Thursday night. It was seventeen fourteen in the fourth quarter. UAB had a ton of COVID issues. You look at the NC State win by three. They should have lost that game. The Virginia Tech game. They should have lost. They they give up sixty two to North Carolina in Miami Gardens. Like I, I don't, do you I believe, don't think you're that good. I, I, yeah, not really believing in him as a coach. Uh, good, good coordinator. Uh, not believing in him as a coach, uh, especially in the NIL era in in Miami. Uh, I mean, five point win against Virginia. Yeah, this team this, was. You know, this. Yeah. He has a Ryan, three, you mentioned th- three and hold on three and nine against the spread when laying seven points or more. And, so, and and Miami was really bad against the spread last year. And, or no, wait, uh, they were they were six and five. Sorry, and they're gonna be those. they're gonna be hyped. They will be they will they will be big favorites in some of these spots. To Colby's point, like I think this is a team that we can make money on week to week. And and I even think like let me circle this North. Te- I hope they have a good start to the season. I hope it's a an Alabama thumping and then four straight wins so we can crush North Carolina. That week coming off the bye, because I, I think we're going to have a situation where Miami's way overhyped, and and maybe they haven't tripped up yet, and we're going to be able to make some money that night. But I think it's under all the way. I think you look at the road games here, and, and you look at some of the home games uh, down the stretch. Virginia Tech always plays well in Miami. Virginia and plays them well NC too. NC State like, yeah, is going yeah. to be a good team at Pittsburgh. We met like I I would pencil that in right now. Take yeah, Pittsburgh. I'm all over that. If Pittsburgh yeah. is somehow a a dog in that one, uh, take the money line. <laughs> And and at Florida State, like if there's a game that I think Florida Especially State after Bobby Bowden's could thing, get you know, up like for, if there's one game on that FSU schedule, like it's that game. So I, I, I think Miami. I, I don't know. Maybe this is one of those win totals. If you if you bet the over, or if you're looking to bet the under, you you look on prop swap later on uh, after they've started four and one to see if you can get some value yeah. there, extract some value from the marketplace, Sean. Ryan, you mentioned NIL, and uh, if only Nevin Shapiro. Hadn't waited a little bit longer. The he could have been the NIL king. The irony. <laughs> he missed his. He missed his call. Jesus Christ! And if uh, you've never seen the the documentaries, the U and the and the, the U, very good. And also, uh, Cocaine Cowboys. Same the, dude. The guy who directed that directed that, and they now have a Cocaine Cowboys series. They had a couple of movies. If you've seen the movies, they're awesome. But if you like the movies, you would love love the series. I'm on like episode four. But there's a hilarious part where one of the uh, one of these like you know billion dollar coke importers he gets arrested out in L.A. He uses a fake name. He skips town on bond, and the uh, L.A. County Sheriff is watching ESPN and sees him on ESPN racing a fucking speedboat. <laughs> oh man, oh, the '80s baller. was such a different era. That's God, baller. and he didn't get arrested. Like it, it still took him a while until oh. they got him. It's like I saw that picture of Michael Irvin. <laughs> <laughs> and what he was dressed going to court back in the eighties, wearing like a, a, a pimp ass suit, with like dark ass <laughs> shades. And he, he, was- he wore that to defend him uh, <laughs> to his trial for getting caught with uh, crack cocaine. And this is, uh, this is hilarious too. Cause uh, trending on a uh, NFL subreddit, you know, it's a, it's a uh, slow media day, but this is from the, <laughs> this is from the nineties. Michael Irving stabbed the teammate in the neck with a pair of scissors coming severely close to severing his uh, car, a carotid artery. And the incident was labeled scissor gate, but he was basically a couple inches away from killing the guy. And you hear that and you think, Oh, it was like a crazy upbringing. This was in his 11th season. He was 32 years (laughs) old and uh, Jerry Jones immediately brokered a six figure settlement between Irving and uh, MacGyver in exchange for MacGyver's silence and to prevent MacGyver from pursuing criminal charges against Irving. Well played. The irony of MacGyver getting stabbed by a scissor. Yeah. (laughs) So much. Didn't see it coming. So much. Well, it's I don't know how do you pronounce Mick Iver. MC Iver. it's, It's perfect. Mm. No. I used to uh, deal with that guy when I was worked at a, a copy shop in uh, in Malibu. Who, MacGyver. Yeah, MacGyver, the the Richard Dean Anderson, which is ironic because he didn't know how to do shit when it came <laughs> to making copies. Like, would just fuck up a color copier. Uh, All right, got sidetracked there. <laughs> Talking coastal win totals. UNC nine and a half, minus one twenty five on the over, plus one hundred five on the under, plus one thirty on the division. 
eight to one to win the conference, eleven to one to make the college football playoff, minus three thousand to miss the college football playoff. I, I think. Do we have a, a Hal Heisman odd ticket? We do. I feel like that was a part of a Col- Colby's employee perks. Yep. Uh, part of his twenty twenty one bonus package. <laughs> oh, one one quick nugget again, just from reading up on uh, the these the different programs. Miami one in ten in bowl games since two thousand six. Mm. Holy shit! Uh, mm. Yeah, just, that is just a crazy collapse. All right, so UNC Hal again. He's 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 the stud. He tied uh, he's tied for the UNC career touchdown record already with sixty eight touchdowns. Right now sixteen to one to win the Heisman. They bring in the veteran offensive lineman. The issue seems to be they lost a bunch of their skill guys uh, to the draft. Michael Carter and Javante Williams, who high on both those guys as far as like over yeah. on their rush yards. Uh, even uh, Deami Brown, he's kind of interesting. They definitely had some players come out. You know? Yeah, so they're missing a lot of the skill guys on the offensive side of the ball. They got a pretty solid defense, at least by UNC standards. Colby, where are you at? Is is the number too high? Yes. Does UNC ball out? Where are we at? I I like the under, man. I mean, this is a team they lose their best defensive player. This defense, yeah, I, maybe nice by UNC standards. This was a defense that was gave up fifty some points to Wake. Yeah. I have concerns on that, and I also have concerns like. Yes, you're replacing all this. You bring back your O line and Sam Howell. That's great, but it's a good start. But you also open up the the season at Virginia Tech. We trap. just hit on this where you have all these new players coming in to a place that hasn't uh, is a toxic place, and they haven't had fans in over a year. And then what do you have week three? Oh, you got Bronco Mendenhall, who mm. seems to own Mac Brown. He just seems to own Mac Brown. So uh, I think that's a dangerous game. Even I don't care where they play it. That he he st- when he was at BYU he swept Texas. Um, then uh, after that you get you get down further in the schedule. Yes, that Miami game that I I think they're probably going to beat Miami, but that could go either way. Uh, at Notre Dame October thirtieth, it's going to be cold in South Bend. I don't care that they get a bye week prior prior to that. Then at Pitt and at NC State, those are two losable games. Uh, quick scheduling quirk too. They're playing Wake Forest as a non-conference yeah, game. Yeah, hmm. just a heads up on that one. Uh, I yeah, I think I think the element of the schedule uh, you you catch the Hokies at the worst possible time because the season couldn't have cratered at this point. And Fuente uh, isn't fired yet. You you <laughs> catch you catch uh, Florida State in an interesting spot. Looking ahead, Mac Brown's to never Mi- beaten to Florida Miami State. Yeah. exactly. Uh, so and, and Florida State, you know who knows they could scrape a win or two. You have the at Notre Dame, you have at Pittsburgh, and you have an at NC State game where NC State is going to be very up for that one. To me, uh, between the Florida State Miami, where they I think they lose one of those two, and then they're, they're going to drop two of those road games. For, I I think this is an easy under as well. I think North Carolina could still end up winning this division and being the best team sure. at nine and three. <laughs> at seven and five, you could. I mean, shit. Pitt didn't Pitt win it at seven and five or six and six one year. No, I, this this division is a mess every year, but I, I it's just hard for me to bet on them to win ten games. When you look at the when you look at everything is a trap on their schedule. They they have just bad situation after bad situation. Even so. that Georgia State game is dangerous. Georgia State returns a ton of players. The the ask Tennessee how that went last time they put Georgia Listen, State on the schedule. They only have four road games, but it's at Virginia Tech, at Notre Dame, at Pitt, and at NC State. And those are all Yeah. Losable games. Very, very yeah. losable games. I so. mean, even that Wake game, it's in Chapel Hill, but Wake put up fifty two on you and Sam. I, Sam I, you Harvard's guys are back. making a lot of good points, but I, I'm a sucker for Sam how I, I like the mechanics, like the arm I, release, like I, the talent. I'd also point out that I, I feel like in general lately we've seen the teams coming in with the hype fall flat on their face in the ACC coastal. Well, and and certainly I, I know early on I said fade some of the teams at the top. I was referring more towards Miami. Uh, I'm gonna go on the over on North Carolina uh, again. It's it's tough to really. If you believe in the chaos, parlay the Hokies. Uh, with Alabama week one and just <laughs> enjoy the top two teams sitting on own one. <laughs> Boom. All right, Kramer, let's talk a little uh, Paramount plus. Let's do it. The summer of soccer continues on Paramount plus stream over 2000 soccer matches a year from around the world. That's all the heart pounding drama from CBS sports, including UEFA champions league, Europa league, Italy's Syria, 
Argentina's Primera División, the Brasileiro, NWSL, the Asian Football Confederation, and the CONCACAF qualifiers featuring the stars from the U.S. and men's national teams, plus much more. It's the best of the beautiful game with all of the beautiful names like Messi, Mbappe, Ronaldo, Rapino, and Pulisic. Be part of the excitement as champions are crowned and history is made. The world's game lives here on Paramount Plus. Visit ParamountPlus.com to start your free trial and stream every match live. We're also brought to you by Prop Swap. That's right, America's number one app to buy and sell sports bets. We've been talking about Prop Swap for a while. If you haven't set up your Prop Swap account, I don't know what you're doing. Uh, very easy to use, active in a ton of states. And again, you don't need to win the bet, you just need the odds to improve. Talking college football last year, Mac Jones was 25 to 1 uh, to win the Heisman Trophy. And then by November, he became the favorite. Prop swap customer who bet on a hundred dollars on Mac before the season sold that Heisman ticket on Prop Swap for one thousand dollars. That's right. Imagine getting a thousand dollars for a ticket that loses. That's right. If you have some losing tickets, but they're looking pretty good, and be honest, you're probably a jinx. You know, you know if you're a cooler or not. And if if the ticket <laughs> looks too good to be true, unload it over at PropSwap.com. Get it to uh, get, have some other uh, sucker get stuck with that, and and the fun part is you can uh, bid on these things. So buy low, sell high. You know the motto. Again, average sellers make five hundred bucks a month on prop swap. Jesus, what am, what am I doing working here like a stiff? I need to just be hanging out over a prop swap. Prop swap. It's where America buys and sells sports bets. Heading over to the Atlantic Conference, kicking off with the Fighting Orange. I don't know if they have fighting, but they should be. Their win total is at three and a half. Over plus 120, under minus 140, 80 to 1 to win the division, 150 to 1 to win the conference. Colby, kick things off. What are we what are we talking? Syracuse football, where are we at? I'm on the under. Really? Yeah. I just think uh I mean, yes, they were depleted by COVID last year, but Very. It, it's a big, it's a big year for Babers. I don't know that they're that good. Um they have interesting game. I, I like they're out of conference games. I Rutgers is better than them, and Liberty's better than them at Ohio. By playing that in Athens, I think it makes it somewhat of a 50 50 game. I still favor Syracuse slightly, and then uh, I have them beating Albany, the Great Danes. But uh, after that, I mean, where are Tommy the Tommy DeVito, though, Colby? He's a dog. I I, I like think, to, I like Tommy DeVito. I don't even think he starts, man. No, I, I think, think they're so. going to start Schrader, the uh, the Mississippi State yeah, transfer. It's part of their problem. Um, but then you look at the the home games and what your home games in conference. Wake Forest, that's your winnable one. But I think Wake is more talented than Clemson. That's not going to happen. Boston College, I doubt that happens. I think they're kind of going to be good this year. And uh, Pitt, which I guess maybe Pitt could pit, but at the same time, like I just don't see. Four wins on this schedule. Minus one ninety seven yards per game in the ACC last year, and one and eight straight up. Uh, it's tough to make a case for this Syracuse team. I, I think they might be bad, but decent against the spread. Like I could see them being a big dog in a lot of these games, and maybe cover, covering a couple numbers. Six and five against the spread last year. Um, if you're gonna bet this over ticket. And you lose this first game to Ohio, you're Is that done. Trouble? You're done. You're done. I think, right? Yeah, um, I mean, I'm not. I'm not dying to lay minus 140, but I, I think at three and a half, that's the play. So yeah, give me, give me under three and a half. See, I actually kind of. I think they have some winnable home games. I think they have like catching Pittsburgh, Boston College. I'm going to exclude Clemson here. They show, they show they show up against actually play Clemson. Clemson good. Yeah, they really do. Well, even throwing that one out wake Boston college, Pittsburgh, and then Liberty, Albany Rutgers all at home. Uh, it's three and a half. You're telling me they can't win uh, four of those games. I think they can. I, I will take you over at a better I, point. I, I guess the, the real, the real angle here is like they, they were one of the teams really playing a JV squad last year. Yeah. that's And true. so you know, I, I think that's the angle where you're you're just going to play the regression, play the play the angle, figure some young guys got some experience, but also I do think that their 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 weird home field advantage will will pop its head up. There's a chance they fire the coach if if, well, if they start out if they lose that Ohio game and then lose the Rutgers, even if they beat Albany, you start out one and five. I think you could be fired. 
Yeah, I'm I'm going over. I'm taking over on two teams that have uh, hot coach hot seat situations with Virginia Tech and Syracuse. I think they're th- they're going to get one ACC win. They'll they'll upset like. Sorry, Pitt. you said you're over, yeah. right? Yeah, I'm on the over. Boss. Pure regression play, Sean. Yeah, I mean, again, if they put, if they're not starting Devito like Colby says. I, I want no part of these guys. If they start zero and four, I'm just going to be just flexing. <laughs> Boston College seven wins, minus one thirty five on the over, plus one fifteen on the under, twenty five to one to win the division, fifty to one to win the conference. Colby, the Eagles, the Golden Eagles. Five and five last year in ACC play, even with the minus twenty eight yards per game, returning the quarterback uh, Jerkovic. Uh, wh- where are we at? He was he was kind of a surprise last year. Zay Flowers, fun. Yeah, the, uh, Jeff Halfley Dog. did a great Dog. did a great uh, year one, considering no spring ball and yeah, implementing did. a new offense. Yeah, now I I like these second year head coaches, and this guy definitely fits that. So, or you know, this coach yeah. fits that mold. But did he get his surprise year out of the way? Like, <laughs> yes. it, was he almost too good that first year? Because I, I, the angle I like on the second year guys is they didn't have time to install their system, yada yada yada, and so people just think they suck as a coach or the situation's not good, and so there's value. Now at seven here, I, I'm it's a hair high you, for Boston College. You uh, have back to back road games twice in the ACC, but, but, and then you have back to back games between an SEC team and Clemson. So, uh, the, like the schedule is not helping Boston College here. I love the over, dude. Really? Yeah. Eagles I, finished. I, I, I absolutely love it. They finished top forty in passing success rate and expected points. That's something you might be able to bring, you know, year over year, especially if you keep the quarterback, the play caller, you know, some dynamic uh, receivers. I mean, no one's uh, they're going to be 3 and 0. We we can agree on that, right? They're going to be 3 and 0. No one's beating them in the first 3. Um then that Missouri game, which is a 50-50 game. Um uh, that one is one where it's sleepy at Chestnut Hill. I I, I don't know it's that true. they're going to I don't know that they they'll lose that game. They could win it. And if they're four and zero at Clemson, they almost beat Clemson last year at Clemson. Uh, I'm not going to say that they're going to beat Clemson, so give me that as a loss. But then they get NC State up at Chestnut Hill a- after a bye. That's a great spot to get a bye because they're the, they're your competition in the Atlantic for for number two. I like how they finish too, back to back home games at the end. If, if anything, look at these away games. Okay, obviously at Clemson's brutal, but then UMass Temple. Louisville, Syracuse, Syracuse Georgia Tech, yeah. and Georgia Tech. Those are all winnable. I, I definitely like when they catch the Hokies. That could be a dumpster fire by then. Uh, Georgia Tech could be, you know, wrapping up a horrible season. Florida State and Wake, both warm weather teams at home. So perhaps, perhaps I'm talking myself into the over here, and maybe that's the lean. I guess where I have the trouble is. I think they could drop a bunch of games in the middle of the season because I do think this is a team that we're going to see have some letdown spots and lose some games that maybe you're, you're not expecting them to. So I, I mean the fact the here's the problem is like Kobe said, if, if Missouri isn't all that and, and Boston college is able to start out four and oh, yeah, it's going to be tough to get to the under. And so for that reason, probably, you know, this is probably going to be a, it's a great number they made out there in <laughs> Las Vegas. But but don't you just uh, like Halfley has momentum behind this program. They have a great recruiting class going currently. I think there's a buzz in a belief within the within the the university that they But no one legit. gives a shit about college football up there. That that does hurt them. I, I'm I do believe that. I'm talking about not the fans. I'm talking about within no, the team. I I understand that. And maybe the more fun way to play this and we'll get to this later is is to it's a like, Oh, maybe, maybe Clemson drops a couple in Boston college wins the division at 25 to one. So you're, you're going under seven though. No, right? no, I'm going over. Oh, you are. Under. I'm saying, yeah, I'm saying it's, I don't you're really, hypothetical. I don't love them. I think they win eight games more times than they win six games. I'll say, that. I don't think this, like they're, they're too good. The quarterback's too good for them to really bottom out in my opinion. Florida state win total five and a half minus minus one twenty on the over plus one hundred on the under also. 25 to one to win the division and 50 to one to win the conference. Interesting one and a half point win total difference, but uh same odds to win the division, the conference What's that tell you bunch of dumbasses betting on uh Florida state to win the con win the division. Yeah. Got Norvell here as the head coach. Where are we at Colby? 
I was one that was on the under, if you listen to my, the college experience episode, but you know what, with Bobby Bowden's uh, passing, uh, you're a huge fan. I, I, yeah. I mean, look, the guy, uh, you know, he won games. Um, he was a winner of football games. This is uh this is, I, I think something magic can magical can happen about that. Patty C has been calling for this upset uh, November 5th or September 5th against uh, Notre Dame. You know, now I actually think there might be something there. When you consider they haven't had fans in a while, and Bobby Bowden, their legend, just died, there they might were, be something there. They were the worst team against the spread uh, last year, three and six. But when you're that bad, maybe there is some a bounce back. They brought in uh, South Carolina safety Jamie Robinson. That should that should help, right? They, they won the transfer portal. They brought in a million transfers. Yeah. Can they? Can Norvell get them to play? But. How about this? If they're able to pull off that Notre Dame upset, which I, like I said, I was reluctant to say that I do think they can beat Jacksonville state, wake forest, Louisville and Syracuse. They, they were losing yeah. to Jacksonville state at half. I know, last year. I know, Let's but just point, throw that out. There. Another thing they do also fit my second year head coach uh, mold here, but that program was like three levels below ground. Like they were below sea level. I don't think you just bounce it's a big back. hole to dig out. I had them going five and seven before this before, but I think can one win can you know, I do think if no, if they can get the Notre Dame game, they probably get there. Uh, they struggled. What what did, did someone just say? It zero and four on the road last year. Yeah, and so just let's just talk about the road games at Wake, at they North win Carolina. At Wake, they, they'll probably at win Clemson, at Clemson at Boston College late in the yeah, year. They're going to lose that BC game at yes. Florida. Yeah, I I don't see like at best I think they get a one road game. So th- then you then you ask yourself where where do the other Five wins come from. Well, they have to beat Miami, NC State. They could beat Miami and Notre Dame. They have to beat two of those three. So I, I just don't see it. Give me the under. No, no, no. I'm going to make a case for six wins right here. Jacksonville State, Wake Forest, Louisville, Syracuse. That's four. UMass five, Miami six. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. But- I mean, shit. I think I'll I think I'll take the. Uh, I don't think they win any road games. I like the bye week before you match. I'm gonna go under just because of the uh, the plus odds, but I think Colby's right. They're gonna steal that game. They're gonna get Miami, but they're not gonna win a road game. They're and gonna so be they're, wake. They could be five. wake because that's not a toxic place at all. All right. Speaking of wake, win total sitting at seven minus one ten each way, twenty two to one to win the division, forty five to one to win the conference. Colby, where are we at with Wake Forest? Love me some Dave Clawson. <laughs> Love me some Dave Clawson. However, however, I think look, I actually think the numbers spot on here. I Twenty returning five. starters for Wake Forest. Sam yeah. and my boy Sam Hartman. This is a great uh, spot. Led, uh, led Wake Forest to a top twenty uh, rank and pass explosiveness. I'm on the under. I think they're going to go like seven and five or six and six. I think if I had to go one Damn. side of that, I think it's more likely that they go six and six oh. than eight and four. I'm going under too. They they seem to be that team that starts hot. And and then cools off. Maybe they're a team you look to play in the uh, prop swap market. Brutal, brutal November too. Yeah. At North Carolina, yeah. home to NC State, at Clemson, at BC on November twenty seventh. Going to be cold as shit. Uh, and so I, I don't know, man. I they get they get they better they better beat Florida State in that game we we're talking about because that that would be a huge win. I don't see them winning much in November. And I don't love them picking up North Carolina as one of their non conference games on the road. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I'm kind of with you, Colby. I think, you know, this one probably ends up being a, a push here, but uh, let's take the under. It, you know, I was a little surprised. It felt like uh, the, the lack of the public nature of that program would have led this number to be a little bit lower. I was surprised to see it to be the second highest number in the, in the division. So yeah. NC state six and a half plus 115 on the over minus 135 on the under 20 to one to win the division 40 to one to win the conference Colby Wolfpack teams bringing back 19 starters defense should be solid Leary ranked inside the top five in average depth of target wow. and big time throw percentage who's, who's the nerd yeah exactly <laughs> he needs I to already I already though. gave out over six when we did this early on. And and clearly you could see how that moved up to Market six and a half. Uh, I'll take the over. I'll roll the dice and take the over six and a half on NC State, and and take the plus odds there. Are you riding with the wolf pack in me? Cole well, Hunter. it also a hundred percent. Well, sorry, it also fits your coach thing, right? Yep, Sean. So this is one of the best, in my opinion. This is one of the best plays in all of college mm. football. Uh, they, wow, you must listen to me a lot on the they, podcast, they, uh, Colby. 
<laughs> We're riding hard with Kansas and NC State. All Look, right. and they. they uh, what happens if they beat Clemson on September 25th? I mean, you gotta like the fact they're getting them in rally. I'm saying, like, they, they have every other I do game. Love, uh, every time Colby looks at the schedule, Kay. they play Clemson tough. What if they take out Clemson? Well, no, they don't play Clemson you're tough. Just, you're rooting, but you're rooting for, I'm just uh, saying they have a home so game. So you guys, you're rooting for chaos. Are you guys? I like it. Penciling in a win when they travel to Stark Vegas. Is that what's going no, on here? Are no. you going against no, Coach, Leach? Against Coach Leach. I got Mississippi State winning that. Then where are you finding all these wins? South guys? Florida, Furman, dog. All right, uh, South uh, La Tech. That's three, right? Colby, two back to back road games I in know, the conference. But isn't it great when the second half is going at Miami where it's like it's like a you're at you know at a cabana, right? Uh th- they're gonna win that game. Right, then they're going to beat Louisville. They're going to beat Florida State, okay, and Syracuse, and then we're, and p- maybe even North Carolina on the final game. I mean, definitely Wake too. I mean, they could really win out after the. Right, sounds week. like you're trying to rain on our Wolfpack parade. No, I think I like the over too. Yeah. I think it's it. Well, even with those four road games, it's still hard to find them not getting getting over the number. Uh, again, they they're this. You know, if you if you want to circle a team that could surprise in the Atlantic Division, of yes. the ACC. I know I just said Boston College. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. If you're gonna take some stabs, why not throw a couple shekels down on NC State at twenty to one, at Boston College at twenty five to one? They're they're certainly capable of uh, of getting through the schedule with what one conference loss, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Let's go, Wolf Pack. How? Louisville, Louisville coming in. What's their win total? I got it right here. Six and a half minus one, five on the over minus one fifteen on the under 18 to one to win the division 35 to one to win the conference. They are a uh, 4.4 net close losses it, signaling Ooh. some regression there. They did lose decent number of their starters, including some of their uh, five out of the, their seven top tacklers. Can they can they replace that production again? Love these uh, Phil steel regression metrics, but minus thirteen in turnovers. I don't know, Colby. Where are you at? Give me the under. Uh, just with the <laughs> Georgia game. I mean, the yeah. Georgia game alone, and then the fact that Clemson normally will drop one game. I feel like often Wait. in the in the ACC, whether it's NC State, whether it's Pitt, they have I'm two talking road Clemson games. or Louisville. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Did, uh, why did I have Louisville's? No, I, I, you know, I, I, uh, I was giving you yeah, a second because you're, you're the database. I had Clemson's schedule loaded up, but I had was on. talking about Louisville. reboot the database. Yeah. Show. Um, <laughs> my apologies. <laughs> I, I am on the uh, I, I am on the under though. I, I think Ooh, they're sticking with six it, and right. sixteen, maybe seven and five. I think it's right there. But uh, sorry, I was looking at Clemson's schedule. No, it's um, right. we'll we'll speak to you. Later and uh, no, <laughs> but they got the Ole Miss game out the gate. That's the big one to me. Is can you can they beat Ole Miss on on if they Labor lose Day? that game? Can they get there? I don't potentially, think they but I, I, I it's think it's a tough. tough task. I think uh, the team is not very. They lost a ton of explosive players a season ago, so they got to make up that and they find some offense. They, they could be. One I, I think they probably do lose the UCF. They so so then at, then what at Florida State? I just gave that to Florida State. Yeah, I think the unders the play here. I I just think that it, it's a it's a six. They're gonna make a bowl game six and six. And you, yeah. probably, I'm with you. I'm on the under. You two. also probably throw Louisville in the conversation with teams that could be facing uh, dumpster fires because the coach is potentially uh, who knows, right? Like, I, I mean, think he's gonna be safe for another year. But I do think it is it is a uh, it's just a tough schedule when you look at uh, at a conference. Well, just, you're just so Ole everyone Miss, knows, what yeah. did he like? He flirted with taking another job. South Carolina, he, yeah. you know, Shane Beamer. Shout out to the Beamer family. But look at that but, at a conference schedule though: Ole Miss, UCF, Kentucky, and then Eastern Eastern Kentucky's a win. But the other three are, are t- you could lose all three of those. Again, uh, it, th- this is one of those where if if you're going to drop two of your non-conference games, you got to go what. Six, yeah. seven, and seven and one in conference. Yeah, it's a tough yeah. schedule. You're not doing that. It does so. help that they get Duke from the coastal. I mean, Duke from the coastal is, is a gift, sure. uh, and Duke and Virginia. Those are two winnable games. But yeah, they have I don't a lot know. of. They have some losable games. Six. Though, if he gets to a bowl, he's safe. I mean, I think he's safe actually, no matter what this year. But a bowl still is like a good year for. They for could Louisville. start one and four. They could, and that and that's why you take the under, not the over, because yeah. that that's. That's a fairly likely scenario that would lead to this team just completely bottoming out. Yeah, 
I agree. Now we're moving on to Clemson. I'm sorry. 11 and a half over plus 125 under minus 150 minus 2000 to win the division minus 750 to win the conference. Which let's talk about that price. That's crazy because why <laughs> when when they get to the conference championship, which they most certainly will, they're not going to be a minus 750 favorite, right? I mean, maybe that depends like, how bad the coastal is, right? <laughs> I, I guess I'm just assuming like UNC's in there. Well, I guess if Virginia Tech somehow made it, or if if but, they're going up against Pitt, maybe they are a minus seven fifty favorite. Isn't this a decent like they, this is a, a decent play? They're a touchdown favorite over North Carolina at at a minimum, maybe ten. Right, but yeah. that's not minus seven fifty on the money. No, no. All right. Anyway, uh, plus four twenty five to miss, plus three eighty to win the college football championship. I mean. My boy, Big Cinco. That's an awesome nickname. Love that nickname. Quarterback <laughs> uh, taking over for Trevor Lawrence. Got a couple starts last year. Projected to be the number one overall pick in 2023. Did he so. sign a deal with like Church's Chicken or something? <laughs> Not Church's. What's the one over there? Louisiana. No, there's uh-huh. one in, uh, it's like, is it Pioneer? Pioneer Chicken, I think. One of the fried chicken yeah. magnets. Phil Steele has them number one defensive line. They also had the number one defensive line in 2018 when they won the national championship. They're playing one ACC team with the winning record. I mean, Colby, where are the holes in this? In I this still Clemson like the team? under. I, I still like the under because the fact they could lose to Georgia, which that's I, all this yeah. is. Well, well, then at Clemson, you saw it last year. They lost at Notre Dame. Uh, the the a couple of years before they lost to Pitt. They lost to Syracuse. Yeah. So the fact they had to play at NC State, at Syracuse, and Pitt. I uh, just give me even if they beat Georgia. They can lay an egg. He uh, signed a deal with uh, Bo Jangles. Will leave Clemson uh, as a millionaire based on the deal. So, and he started two games. Uh, Brand new, you know. Again, it's insane. Back to back road games at Syracuse at Pittsburgh. I know that doesn't sound crazy, but both of those are like strangely long. They have a buy though coming into Syracuse. That Uh, was nice. Kudos to the ACC, by the way. Clemson Clemson hadn't played back to back away games in five years. uh, Gave him that bye week into the back to back. And away. I hate to go there, but one of the <laughs> other reasons you take the under right now is because they still haven't reached the uh, vaccination threshold, which means they could get absolutely mm. butt fucked by by COVID contact tracing. And Colby, how deep is that quarterback room? Oh, it's one deep. It's, it's one only. Deep. It's only ugulele. It's like him. And then after that, and, and then fucking freshman. Big Cinco. So well, yeah, and then well, isn't there? Is there backup? Did he blow out his ACL? Well, or am his, I confused? One backup tra- has Someone transferred, transferred. Yeah. and then no, no. Then another one tore his ACL. Yeah. So they're on a walk on after. Uh, that would be. Uh, we'll see Get if the they, fucking if they, water boy playing out there. If Big Cinco <laughs> goes down. They might. They might try to add someone to the transfer portal. Well, I, I'm going to take the under here, I, just because I, I I'm I don't Six like straight ACC. Championships. I'm not going to take uh, these these teams to go undefeated on a win total. And uh, I forget who tweeted it out or someone said, you're actually probably better taking a Georgia money line than under minus 150 yeah. on, on this win total. Yeah. Cuz I mean, you're getting plus odds on the Georgia money line versus minus 150 on the under. I uh, guess I guess you're giving yourself other outs. I think that the the NC State game is losable. I think that you, I think the Pittsburgh game is losable. You UConn is coming off a bye, guys. Oh, so that's, man. that could be a tough spot. Even Louisville oh, could be tricky, man. You never know. You never know. Uh, to me, yeah, to me you got to circle that that NC State. If if it's not Georgia, you got to circle that NC State game. I think Georgia Pitt. there. Pitt could be, but I just think who's not it, like just high level uh, guy who has started a couple games, got a little bit of experience going against an SEC defense that is one of the best every every year. Yeah. You don't think that? Like, I'm taking Georgia. Yes, please. I'm assuming that will be in the six pack week one. Georgia's on in the top uh, twenty five side. <laughs> <laughs> Coley, Coley won't won't go out of his way to feature big name programs. Right, you but, give me, it's my but, choice. But I can it's assure you, choice. UMass and Bowling Green will be in there. All right. <laughs> I'm already thirsty for the fun, uh, fun fact uh, about Dabo Sweeney, John. What college did Dabo go to? This, I know this, this yeah. you might know. Colby? Virginia Tech, Alabama, Alabama. Yeah. What really? position yeah. did he play? Tight end. Ooh, wide out. Wide out. Yeah, really? In the yeah, great yeah. lineage of Julio Jones. <laughs> and uh, and Calvin Ridley, Devonta Smith, Devonta Smith, Jalen Waddle, Dabo Sweeney. All right, time to close it out strong. Happy
course, reminder, check out underdogfantasy.com. Use a promo code SGPN for a free $25 entry. Plug that into the best ball mania two for a chance to win $1 million. You get the $5 puppy as well. And the $250 big dog, uh, dog. entry as well. <laughs> lock lock and a dog Colby. Uh, what do you got? Or no Kramer. You start things off. Is that we right? Make, we make Colby go last. Whatever day. you want to do guys. No, no. You, you we're gonna make Colby uh, well, go last. Because you, the, Sean doesn't want you piggybacking my picks. Yeah, oh, well, exactly. I, I've yeah. never piggybacked one of your picks in my life. All right, <laughs> I'm a man who mows lock. my I'm, I mow my own lawn, bro. All right, give me give me uh, lock number one is gonna be Georgia Tech. Uh, I I just think Georgia Tech under five. We can't forget that they're all, they're like a se- like last year was like a half season. They're one and a half seasons away from being a uh, triple option team. Uh, so let's lock that one up for the for the lock on the Atlantic side. Boy, I really want to take the Louisville under just because that could be a complete dumpster fight. Like this is one where we could be looking at one and four and like, ha, it was six and a half. Are you kidding me? Yeah. And for my dog, boy, dog. do we just take? How do I how do I manipulate a dog into this situation? You know what? Uh, I think. I you think can parlay some win totals nah, if you want to get. I don't think you need to get that crazy. I think it's it's fairly ridiculous that Pittsburgh, with all that they've done at, at home before, uh, super senior, blah blah blah, ten to one to win the division feels feels like a good price. Uh, especially we know the divi- it's always chaotic. Uh, there's going to be teams that lose games they shouldn't. So having a six year senior senior probably matters, right? Definitely, mm. definitely. Okay, we found value, Colby. You're not next though. Sean's I know. Next. Lock. Uh, I'm sticking with NC State, even though it moved to six and a half. I'll give that out again. <laughs> no, the, the way you do that is you tell everyone that you bet it at well, a better price. I bet price. it at six, yeah. but you guys, uh, you losers, who didn't. So you got to say subscribe. You miss all these uh, closing line I just, value. When you're listening to a podcast and the guy goes, you know, I bet this earlier at this price, and it's way worse now. But <laughs> it's like, well, fuck you, dude. How, how about you mention it when you're making this sweet, sweet bet? I Fucking did. Lie. Not on you. the podcast. I'm not, I'm not making fun of you. I'm making fun of people that act like you. Ryan, how did you not lock? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I get it now. You're not making fun of me. Just people who act in the same way. You didn't didn't mean to do that. (laughs) Miami under nine and a half lock that up. Oh, that's a fun one. Yeah. Come on. Where are we at? That that one was just talking. I'm a little worried and I'm a little worried. I get it. You don't want to. He miss can't be Jesus. healthy, right? He got. He. What did he tear his ace? What, what was that? Like December, January. January. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe late how December. How is he a hundred percent? Him and Burrow, not a hundred percent. All right, for my dog. Uh, I think my dog is Sam Howell, and I like UNC to make the college football playoff. No. Dog. No. You think uh, Michael Jordan's getting involved in this one? Yeah. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of Nike athletes, a lot well, of bag dropping. That's yeah. the ultimate bag drop: is Michael Jordan bag dropping ESPN to get somehow get UNC <laughs> in the college football playoff? Maybe SEC only gets one team in, ACC gets UNC and oh, Clemson wanna, in. You want a sequel to The Last Dance? <laughs> All right, let's see that Come fucking on. Jordan brand in the college football I, playoff. I think he's baby. a guy that translates the ratings. <laughs> Colby, close it out. What do you got? Uh, I, dude, you, you Sean's been beating me to the punch here on on these uh, picks. I've been I've been what did he do? Oh, I listen to the, the college experience. He listens uh, to your shows. You think I get yeah. my info? NC State over six and a half is is a f- sure bet. And then uh, and I was gonna take Miami as the under, but I'm not gonna copy your Thank exact you. pick. So give me UVA over six and a half, even though Miami's probably my favorite play there. Um, <laughs> you come into my <laughs> house. I'm not taking his favorite. I'm not, I'm you not, come into my house. Uh, it, it, Bronco Minnehill is good for it, and then uh, value play. Um, yeah, value call play. it dog, Colby. I'm dog. gonna take uh, VT to uh, win the the coastal at plus eight hundred. I'm so glad you did that. Yeah. But see, you took the UVA over, so you knew you had to come back with something <laughs> that would, would please me. Oh well, you took my pit I mean, coming into the episode. I was taking Pitt and NC State and Miami, and then you guys took them all. So, but remember, never lay points with Narduzzi. He popped my collar again. Somehow he's going to win the division <laughs> without covering a spread as a favorite. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, good times! College football previews, breaking them down, catch up, and of course, catch up on all 130 of Colby's individual team previews. It's all going over on the College Football Experience. Make sure you download the app. Massive, massive. Prizes being given away exclusively on the app. Download SGPN. 
the app store or Google play store and uh, leave a nice five-star rating review on Apple podcasts, the app store, send that in tag us, do whatever you can to get our attention. So you can win some free gear, giving away free merch every Monday, AKA hashtag merch Monday for the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green. Thank you for participating in the sports gambling podcast. And he is Ryan go Hokies Kramer. Let it ride.